Hey, this is Nika Monford, a.k.a. Tech Savvy Diva. Yo, this is Terrence Gaines, a.k.a. Brother Tech. And you're listening and or watching The Snob West Show, the show for Apple snobs where we talk all things Apple and then some. Welcome back, everybody, to a new week of Snob OS, um, whether you're um, listening um uh, on your phone or whether you're watching our video on YouTube, welcome. Uh, let's start off first by thanking all of our Patreons. Um, if you are a Patreon, you would have just transitioned from your live show, your snobbish show, into the regularly recorded show. So let's go ahead and hop in to the show. Let's start off with the lowdown where we talk all things Apple. Um, this is the third day of Black History Month. Um, so in honor of that, we talked, I believe, last week about some of the initiatives that Apple has um, as it relates to Black History Month. And one of those things is the Apple Watch Unity Challenge. So it's the first ever of its kind. Um, it's going to be held the full month of February. So it started on the 1st and it will end on the 28th. And surprisingly, this month is a perfect square. Um, so to speak on the calendar. So the first was on a Monday and it goes, you know, the seven days all the way through. So that's pretty cool. Um, so what this challenge does is um, it encourages um, Apple Watch users to celebrate Black History Month by closing all of their move rings seven days in a row. And if you do that, you get a special challenge um, Black History Month sticker. Yep. Yep. So uh, this is a little bit easier than some of the other challenges in the Apple Watch because most of them involve closing all your rings mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time. But for this one, they just want you to um, close your move rings seven days in a row. Um, sounds easy. <laughs> I haven't even started yet because I have <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to start. I'm going to start. So maybe tomorrow. Uh, you know, by the time you're listening to this, I should be two days into this challenge to where I close my move rings uh, seven days in a row. Uh, in addition to that, uh, they give you the uh, Black Unity Challenge uh, medal or award in the Apple uh, Fitness app. And it looks like, you know, the Black History Month fists. And like Nika mentioned, they give you uh, stickers to use in messages and in uh, FaceTime. So, you know, typical um activity challenges but you know like nika said it's specifically catered to and in celebration of black history month so i thought that was pretty cool that you know apple is you know doing more you know uh, on the surface level too because representation matters even on a you know uh, a visible level level you know and this is pretty visible because people who use apple watch people who uh, exercise on a regular you know, they'll see actually see that pop up when they've actually completed this challenge, whether they were actively doing it for the challenge or not, mm -hmm. because there are a whole bunch of medals in, in you know, your Apple Watch. When you get a medal, you'd be like, oh, OK, I didn't, even I didn't realize I was that. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and it's also I think what gets lost in the whole Black History Month celebration is that. It's, you know, so heavy and oppressive. No, we deserve to be able to laugh and enjoy things mm -hmm. as well. So let us get our stickers. Let us get our medals. You know, Black History Month celebrates, you know, the full diaspora, you know, of Black history. And that's, of course, the struggle stuff, the overcome stuff. But it also includes the fun stuff as well. So, yep. you know, let's get in on the fun, too. All right. <laughs> I and wouldn't call working out fun but i guess i see where you're going yeah <laughs> and also i think you posted a, a picture of something some things that you have done oh, for apple yeah, yeah. on your black history tip oh yeah well i've got that in the hookup so oh, okay I'll, cool I'll cool 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 that a little bit later okay yeah, cool, cool, cool. so all right all right um let's head on over to the next thing um apple um launches a uh, Chrome iCloud password extension for the Chrome browser. So essentially you can get your keychain, your typical Apple keychain um, that's typically reverse for Safari onto Google Chrome now. So that's definitely um, something new. And for people who use both um, 
Apple uh, and, and Windows products, like I'm sure many of us do. I know my work computer is Apple. I mean, not Apple, um, is Windows. So kind of going mm-hmm. back and forth and I have pretty much everything saved into Keychain. So this gives, um, you know, users the ability, the flexibility of being able to, your saved passwords that you have in iCloud and Keychain moved over to, um, to Chrome. Because yeah, a lot of people use Chrome. it's kind of surprising, but not really for Apple because you know you think of Apple walled garden and ecosystem so they want you to use their browser so they keep you know the the idea is you would think that they would keep keychain walled into safari but i mean don't get it twisted most people use chrome mm-hmm. and i'm pretty sure most apple users use chrome. use chrome as well so it's like you know you they you it it makes sense for them to extend something that you would think should be exclusive and actually spread that out and give that to other uh, platforms, in this case being Chrome on Windows. Now, I don't think, well, I don't think you can't use it in Chrome OS, you know, so all those people that have Chromebooks that use the the Mm internet-based Chrome OS, they won't be able to use... It's strictly uh, for Windows OS. but But if you do have a Windows PC and you use Apple products and you use Keychain, to keep your passwords, you know, keep your other, you know, security things locked down, you can get that extension for your PC if you use Chrome. Yeah. And it would be, I think it would be more locked down if you couldn't install Chrome on Apple products. That would, you know, give it more of the quote unquote exclusive feel where you don't even, you can't even use it. But since you can install Chrome on Apple devices, then it makes sense. Right. All right, let's head on over to the next thing. So we've talked about this before and in a couple of different iterations. So this whole Apple car, you know, situation is almost at fever pitch. It's like article after article. So many people are talking about it. So there are two different stories that are out right now. Um, and the first one um, talks about, you know, the price, the um, price. And when it could ship, um, this first one uh, article is coming from Cult of Mac. So essentially, um, you know, it will be shipped as early, could be shipped as early as 2025. Um, It'll be a high end model. So think probably terms of like Tesla, probably on par with Tesla cost, I'm thinking. Um, uh, Even though this analyst, Ming Chi Ko, Ming Chi Kuo. Kuo. Um, Apparently, he's a a very um, reliable uh, analyst that has has gotten it, you know, right uh, quite a bit. Um, So we talked about it, uh, I think it was either the last week or the week before, the possible partnership, uh, the partnership rumors between Apple and Hyundai. Um, And uh, he alludes to this in this article as well. But what I find interesting is that they're saying if the partnership with Hyundai goes well, then it could extend to similar arrangements with other car companies such as GM or Vauxhall, um, who used to be a part of uh, GM, and some other car makers as well. So I think that was one of the questions I think you asked, asked um, last week, Terrence, was did you think it was going to be singularly, you know, on one um, on, on one car maker or if it was going to be something that could be spread out among other car makers. And it seems like based on this article that it could be something that is distributed um, to other car makers as well. Right. But what we don't know is it just says partnership. What is that? What, what, when you say when Apple's, when Ming-Chi Kuo says if Apple's rumored partnership with Hyundai goes well, the tech giant could come to similar arrangements with General Motors, blah, 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 so on and so forth. What does partnership mean? I think what partnership means, and that's the second half of the kind of, I called it car wars, because there's this article out saying that they're building the car with Kia. So who is it? But based further down the article, it mentions that um, the the chassis on the car will come from Hyundai. They have an eGMP platform. So I'm mm-hmm. assuming that he's saying that some of the parts will come from Hyundai. Um, and that makes sense because um, as Charles, uh, one of our 
our snobbers put in the chat that GM has electrical vehicles as well. So it could be the fact that if they're able to use this chassis from Hyundai, that other car dealerships or car makers that have EVs, they could use their existing, I guess, base for their cars on top mm -hmm. of Apple's, well, Apple's car and underneath have the different car makers, I guess, guts, so to speak, to power it. So okay. that's kind of what it's alluding to. But what's interesting uh, um, is, you know, we'll, we'll go to the next article, but what does it really mean? Like, <laughs> what does it really right. mean? Because a little further down in the article, and I, I mentioned that Kia has this big 3.9 billion deal that's rumored to come out. But Kia will be doing the production part from the U.S. of the Apple car. So it's really just kind of a whole like smorgasbord of different things. And you can't quite figure out what the different partnerships and, and deals are. My guess as of right now is, you know, in the second article from 9 to 5 Mac that you mentioned, I think Apple as, has been trying to break through in the battery technology because of course they've got iphones they've got ipads they've got apple watch they've got all they got a mac you know they've got all these products that are their main bread and butter that run off of batteries what is the main issue with mobile devices battery life mm -hmm. so i think apple has been trying to crack the battery code right and i think maybe they have so now, since they've cracked it on the mobile device and the personal computer device uh, uh, arena or stage, maybe they're trying to hurry up and uh, farm this battery technology out to the automotive space. Because right now, a Tesla is cornered the market. And nobody can come close. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you put up. <laughs> Nobody's come close to Tesla. Right. You know. So maybe Apple with this new breakthrough battery technology and the integration with the mobile devices. So you think of, so trying to put this in partnership terms, right? So it'll be an Apple car in the sense that it'll use Apple's battery technology and it'll use Apple's uh, car design user interface, mm -hmm. uh, the interface. Um, and so the interface will connect to your mobile devices. It'll connect to Apple servers. It'll do all the cool things that you can do, you know, from a MacBook to an iPad to so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But everything else is GM. So it may just be a, since we're talking GM, it may just be a GM vehicle, but powered by Apple. So not necessarily an Apple branded car, but the right. guts being, um, Apple and further down the article on nine to five Mac, it, it, it states that, you know, Apple has been poaching, um, you know, execs from Tesla and they recently, um, you know, stole away, um, Porsche's, um, vice president of chassis development. So they're mm -hmm. picking, you know, the top ones, the top people in the game to come over. So it'll be interesting to see how it does pan out if they're doing an Apple branded car, like you said, mm -hmm. or if it's just the guts. I don't think they can do both because it would be direct competition, you know. Well, um, think of Windows, think of Microsoft, right? So Microsoft, you think of Windows and Toshiba, HP, Dell, Hewlett Packard, all these other companies make computers of their own brands but it's powered by windows but microsoft has a microsoft tablet and microsoft surface. book microsoft yeah, all these other true. things and they've come to some sort of you know balance uh mutual understanding i guess mm -hmm. maybe that maybe that's the same thing with apple could be like i said now these companies like hyundai like uh, kia like general motors that we've all kind of mentioned they're going to have to bow down for lack of a better term to apple's strict requirements in order to have a power apple powered car but once they do that then it'll be a you know think of a cadillac escalade or a kia sorrento or or the g the genesis uh vehicles from kia they're kind of high-end mm -hmm. uh vehicles you know those could be you know the their own brand but is powered by apple mm -hmm. so you know 
me as an Apple user, you know, I won't have to think twice about anything. I just use it the same way I use my phone mm-hmm. and my tablet and my computer. Mm-hmm. It should be interesting to see how this starts to play out. Um, I think a lot of people are hoping for an Apple branded and Apple designed right. car because of the way right. that Apple right. designs, you know, their other technology. So it'll be very interesting to see how it plays out. But it's definitely hot and heavy because, you know, I've seen several different articles on all the tech sites talking about it. Uh, so it's- and, and again, Tesla is still stepping up ahead up front because they just refreshed their Model X, which is the sedan, and they refreshed their Model X, the the Model the Model S, which is the sedan, and the Model X, which, which is, is the, their the SUV. SUV. Right. So they've you know those cars have been out for like ten years mm-hmm. now. So they refreshed the look, they refreshed the screens, they refreshed the speed and the battery life. They've got some of those. I saw some specs. Uh, for the new versions of those uh, vehicles and they've got like 500 mile battery life wow that's a long yeah. time you know for a battery but then again no other company can even get close yeah. to that right you've got they're extending their lead that's what they're doing there's like exactly we see so, people coming but they're not gonna quite catch us so let's just extend let's lap them again just to so you know whatever, be safe whatever these companies are going to do apple all these other car men they better hurry up they better hurry up because they're getting farther and farther tesla's and running farther up the score man behind. yep yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um the next thing i wanted to talk about it it's technically three different um three different things but it's all related so ios um 14.5 so um it was recently released um to beta and um it's uh showing off some pretty interesting uh new features um and the first one is um uh wait a minute which one am i on i think i clicked too far ahead the first one is um unlocking your um iphone with your face mask on Mm -hmm. so how do they how do they plan to do that with this new um ios version if my computer would still work um Mm -hmm. and what they're doing is the way that they have decided to go about being able to unlock your phone um with your face mask on is by using it with your apple watch Right. So, um, excuse me. So, uh, last year, um, we all know that the pandemic was new and people were wearing face masks. So the first update that Apple did was it made it easier that if you had your, you know, when you swipe up to unlock, um, if it saw that your face was covered, it would immediately flip over to like manually entering in your passcode mm-hmm. on your phone. So that was their, um, initial, Um, solution to to handling the whole you know how am I going to uh, you know unlock my phone when I have all of this stuff uh, on my face so the next iteration of that is to um, uh, first is there are some conditions that it it requires Uh, to be able to unlock the Apple watch I'm reading from 9 to 5 Mac uh, feature unlock the Apple watch feature you have to do some setup in the settings first. And you have to, your face ID has to detect a mask. Your Apple Watch has to be nearby, uh, has to be on your wrist, and it has to be unlocked, and it has to have mm-hmm. passcode enabled. So those are, you know, the basic things that have to be in place for, for this to work. Um, so I don't know, I haven't, have you um, looked at the beta uh, anything at all? No, I have not looked at the beta. Um, I've removed the beta from my devices. Um, I only did it for like 14. Uh, once it came, then I ditched the beta. But what I can say is this is not surprising at all. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say that is because you can already do this with a Mac. Mm-hmm. You know, you can use your Mac to unlock. You can I'm gonna use your watch. Race. You can use your watch to unlock your Mac. Mm-hmm. You, know, you have to go through the settings. And of course, the same conditions apply with the exception of the mask. You know, the, your watch has to be on you. It has to be unlocked, and you have to have that setting enabled in the Mac settings. But when it when it works, it just works. So I open the top of my Mac, 
my uh, watch the little have tap the feedback mm-hmm. that let me know that it unlocks and it's straight in. So it only makes sense that they would extend this to the iPhone specifically because, you know, face ID is not 100 percent right now because everybody is wearing a mask, which further leads me to believe that the iPhone 13 or whatever they call it will have touch ID in it uh, because or or like we mentioned last week. They'll put Touch ID in the watch, in the watch face, Mm -hmm. to where we'll be quicker at ways to access, you know, our iPhones, quicker way to pay for things via Apple Pay, because Face ID or your facial recognition is hindered right now Mm -hmm. because of coronavirus, because of masks. So they've got to come up with another way. This is a first try. Then they'll extend it, and then they extend it, you know, and then, like I said, they'll put Touch ID back on the iPhone soon. Yeah. Yeah. How that'll play out. We've seen some uh, schematics of how that could possibly work out. So um, definitely, uh, you know, it'll definitely more sec- be more secure, as we mentioned last week on the watch, if you have the, the touch rather than having to actually manually enter in your passcode. So um, that's uh, a huge change that is coming uh, with the beta. And the other thing is it looks like um, Apple Card is going to come out, is going to have like a family feature for multi-user accounts. So um, how do you, are you going to give <laughs> your girls access to the to the Apple Card on their, on their devices? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, so the, and that's not because, and that's not because I don't trust them, but you know, um, the way our family set up, um, you know, uh, we have a allowance <laughs> that <laughs> we all get. And then from there, how you use things, how you pay for it is on your own devices. Mm-hmm. Right. So I use for my allowance, I use the Apple card and that's how I pay for things. And then I just use my allowance to pay off the card. Mm-hmm. Same thing with my wife. She could care less about an Apple, nothing. So outside of the stuff that I give her, she's not going to go to voluntarily sign up for anything. So she's got her own ways and means to pay for things uh and then my kids they they use the green light card uh the green light card is a you know uh it's like a kid-friendly one to Mm -hmm. where we have more controls to where where and how they spend money Mm -hmm. so we can put money on their card and say hey you can use your money but you can only use it at this store Mm -hmm. or you can only use this amount and it's built in to where, you know, once they complete their chores, I can go on this green light, you know, the app and see that their chores have been completed. And then I can divvy out their allowance that way. So all that to say, not that they won't be using the, the Apple Car family feature for multi-user accounts, not because I don't trust it, is because, you know, we've got our own. You already got your system. Hey, right, right. And I don't think the Apple Car family feature will be as um, all the flexibility that current services that we already use have. So yes. un- until that changes now, if that changes, then maybe. But right now, you know, we've already got it down packed. So. Right. So they, it's internally, they call the new feature Madison. And, and what this feature does is it allows the user to share, of course, the same Apple card with other members of the family through the iCloud sh- family sharing feature. So whoever owns the card, they can invite other people to mm-hmm. share their card and the, okay. whoever the owner is, they can track the spending in Apple okay. Wallet of, you know, who's doing what. So it's not like, right. you know, they can just easily go in and run it up and anybody who's on the family plan can have access. The card owner has to actually invite them to be a member or authorized user on, right. on the card. And so... Um, you know, you still get the same credits and daily cash and all that good stuff, but it all goes to whoever owns the card. Um, and okay. also, um, based on the 4.14.5 beta, the card owner can set spending limits for each user okay. that's invited. So if you have maybe a 15 year old, you say your allowance is a hundred bucks. So you only get to spend a hundred dollars on the Apple card. Maybe have someone younger, maybe eight or nine, you got $50 so you can allocate who can spend what and oh look a little bit further it says you have to be 13 years or older 
mm-hmm. to be able to to use it and there are dedicated options for parents to control their children's spending so it looks like they're saying if your 13 year old has 50 dollars and they've gotten up to 49.99.99 or whatever it says limit reach user with the name of whoever the user is has spent more than whatever their limit is for the month so it looks like they they have some control around it and it's not just kind of a a free-for-all and as one would expect but i mean it it makes sense um because they already have the family sharing in place so Mm -hmm. what's next you know the money part of it as well so yeah i mean that makes sense and it introduces kids to credit cards Again, budgets you know, and all that good stuff right right now uh you mentioned mm-hmm. <laughs> in your scenarios you know if you're 13 or 15 and you have a hundred dollar allowance man i, I want to be in that family oh, i want to okay. be in that family <laughs> see i don't know i don't I don't have kids so i don't know how it works so i don't know how much that, kids get for at, allowance at 15 getting a hundred dollar allowance is big baller oh that's a, okay all right all right <laughs> so yeah but no um you know, yeah, this is cool because it does introduce them to credit, which is, of course, different than debit, because, like I said, my kids specifically, they just used to have debit cards. But the cool thing about the way I've got it set up is I can tell up front that you can only spend this amount of money in this particular store. Oh, so it's even more granular. It's, yeah, yeah, it's super granular. It's like you can only take ten dollars out of the atm you know with this it'll tell you you know with the apple card it says your kid has spent more than whatever but until it gets to that level they can run it up Mm -hmm. right so yeah uh for me for my kids i need a little bit tighter uh controls and i'm not quite ready to introduce them to credit credit Mm -hmm. yet you know but once they get a little bit older you know maybe at the you know 16 17 18 level to where you know they start driving Mm -hmm. so on and so forth then maybe this would be a good option because it'll be an actual credit card versus just a debit card but we'll see you know of course we got a every family's different every kid is different you know we've talked about stories to where five-year-olds have run up apple card uh, buying Roblox or whatever, sixteen thousand dollars. Sixteen thousand people. So I'm pretty sure those families, you know, they may want to opt out of this joint. Right. <laughs> because if your kid can run up sixteen thousand dollars on your credit card and you like not know it, I mean, exactly. That's <laughs> wild. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yep. All right. Um, was there anything else you saw out there in the Apple Streets that we didn't cover? You want to talk about? Uh, nope. All right. So let's head on over to Second String where we talk all other tech. And we're starting off this week with our favorite. Oh, <laughs> good old Facebook. Um, so I think we talked about it. Oh, yeah, we did talk about it last week with Facebook trying to find a way around Apple's new privacy tracking feature. Um, so Apple has taken an approach that they've taken before when they took out the the ads in the newspapers. So Mm -hmm. um, what they're doing now is they are trying to yet again play into their small business um, Mm -hmm. users and say, you'll ultimately be the biggest, you know, loser in this, in this privacy tracking, you know, you're going to see your revenue drop. You're going to see your ads drop. It's going to be more difficult to customize your different uh, email campaigns and and all those types of things. So Apple is not Apple. Facebook is really laying it on thick to try and get people to not use this um, asking for permission to track your your activity outside of Facebook. Yeah, and it's a shame, you know, because maybe. Maybe if Facebook showed that they were more responsible with user data before this, then maybe when this thing came, number one, maybe maybe Apple would not have had to put these new restrictions on companies like Facebook, who their whole business model is getting people's data, then maybe they could, when Apple did do that, then maybe Facebook 
would have a play at saying, hey, this is going to hurt mm-hmm. the user. And then maybe the user would have been like, yeah, you're right. We do need to say something. But since <laughs> Facebook has screwed up the data, you know, you, they've, pro- they've mean, proven unworthy. <laughs> They've proven unworthy to be able to protect our data. Now companies like Apple have said, all right, fine, we're going to step in and we are going to make sure our users know what Facebook is and isn't doing and giving them the option that hasn't been evident with Facebook in the past, give users the option of whether or not they want to do this and the other. So it's like too little, too late almost, Mm -hmm. but... You know, the whole point of this story is Facebook is definitely trying to figure out what's the angle. You know, how can we guilt trip our users into giving us all their data so we can make millions of dollars? How do we do that? You know, this is this is just their play at, you know, trying to figure that next step out. So it'll be interesting to see if this works and it'll definitely be interesting to see what else they try if this doesn't work. <laughs> right. Because I know once I, I, I saw, you know, this article um, that you posted, um, I saw how they are trying to, if they can't get you on the guilt trip, they're going to try and trick you with the messaging. So, um, there's a pop-up apparently, I haven't seen it, that it, it, the pop-up says allow Facebook to track your activity across other companies, uh, apps and, and websites. And the mm-hmm. options are ask app not to track and allow. So Mm -hmm. it's like, wait a minute, which one do I select if I don't want it? Right. Because it it is a bit deceptive in the way that they have worded the the option. And I think they're hoping, you know, a 50-50 chance that you may, you know, click the thing that they want, which is to to not allow them to track. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very they they're being kind of they're being kind of shady, quite honestly. Right. First, they're trying to guilt trip you, and then if the guilt trip doesn't work, the next layer is to try and trick you into mm-hmm. selecting the option that you don't know you're selecting because the wording is super confusing. So yeah, man, yeah. So I just wanted to read this uh, Tim Cook's uh, uh, quote here that I thought was interesting. He says, "Technology does not need vast troves." of personal data stitched together across dozens of websites and apps in order to succeed. Advertising has existed and thrived for decades without it. So basically Tim Cook is saying, y'all don't need all, y'all don't need, y'all don't need users to explicitly allow you to follow them everywhere on the internet in order for small businesses to to succeed succeed on Facebook. (laughs) They'll figure it out. You'll figure it out go somewhere right (laughs) why are you worried about what i'm doing off your app if if you're you know in your whole little world and your app is so great and you have all this stuff going on why do you care what's going on outside of your particular application so Mm -hmm. facebook is facebooking and uh this is why people are so skeptical of of their motives in in their technology because they're trying to scam you or be a little slick and shysty rather than just being upfront and, you know, trying to fix what is obviously broken. And if they just be honest, yeah. people will be with it. They've got two, three, four billion people using the service. Right. Just be like, look, this is what it is. They ain't going to scare nobody off. And if they do, it ain't going to be it's enough, not gonna to, be to, enough. To make any sort of dent in anything. Nope. <laughs> not at all. But do your job, do it well and let the chips fall. Yep. Because people, I mean, honestly, they're not leaving Facebook. You know, some of the, you know, your Gen Zs and your millennials and your younger Gen Xers, you know, they're pretty much off. But your grandma, your auntie, all of them, they are firmly on the Facebook and Mm -hmm. they are not going anywhere if they can't have their Facebook. So, (laughs) all right. Um, Some breaking news from yesterday. Um, Jeff Bezos. Amazon billionaire, richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos, is stepping down as CEO of Amazon and is transitioning into a new role called executive chair. And that's of the Amazon board. And this is starting in Q3 of 2021. And Andy Jazzy, who is currently the CEO of AWS, 
uh, will replace Bezos as CEO of Amazon. When I saw this, I was a bit shocked. And I'm like, hmm, what is going on? Because Nothing. He just don't want that smoke anymore. He's like, look, I'm the richest man in the world. I don't feel like being bothered with the everyday stuff that goes on with being a CEO, being the face of the company and having to make comments and having people all in my business. So let me just slide over to the side. Don't really give up no control, but just make all the money side, (laughs) put somebody else as the face of the company, let them take them bullets. And then me sit over there and be like, hey, CEO. Talk to him. Point your attention over there. So basically, that's what this is. <laughs> oh, so you don't think it's any type of something? Because I've I've seen things people talking about. They think something happened or is about to happen, and he's trying to get out of the way. I know the um, was it Uber? Oh shoot, I'm trying to remember. No, it was Amazon. Their delivery service, Amazon Prime, and it was something else where there was um, a lawsuit filed and Amazon has to pay like 61 million, I think, um, back. They were basically skimming the driver's tips and oh, taking yeah. their tip money to pay their salary rather than giving them all their tips on top of what their you know normal rate is. Was that Amazon or was that DoorDash? I can't remember. I remember it was Amazon. Store. It was, it was, I think it was Amazon because I know was I saw, it? yeah, because that just came out, I think, um, in the last day or so. And so that's why I think people are trying to link that with this. But in the grand scheme of things, $61 million to Amazon, I mean, mm-hmm. pocket change, you know? Right. So right. according to this, he says, uh, uh bezos is removed from day-to-day activities for the most part um his energies and attention on new products and initiatives which being some sort of 10 billion dollar bezos earth fund and blue origins which is the uh aerospace firm which is they're kind of competing against tesla for the for the space you know tesla's doing spacex and they're you know they're Mm -hmm. six again lapping everybody else mm-hmm. with this you know space flight and so you know some of these other companies like you know and uh, bezos blue origins which i don't understand the the whole thing with outer space anyway you know i think maybe these companies know <laughs> they're tearing up the earth so it's like gotta find somewhere a, else to go right let me let, we've torn up the earth so let me figure out how to get ahead and get out in space so we can be the first to tear that up too yeah <laughs> let's get there while it's nice and pristine before we you know make a mess of it there right. so yeah so all yeah according to the story you could be right uh, there could be some inner workings that may be leaked or about to be dropped but from what i gleaned from this was you know it's like look I didn't do what I had to do. You know, I want to sit back and goof off like Elon Musk does. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I want to enjoy all of my billions Mm -hmm. and um, not have to deal with you peasants. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So time will tell if there's something a bit more devious or, I guess, off center. But it's likely what you said. He's made all the money. I mean, literally all the money. And right. he's like, I don't want to do this no more. I want to try and do something else because I'm bored of, of this now. I want to try my hand at something else. So should be interesting to see if anything else comes out or if it's just, you know, like you said, uh, he don't want to do it no more. And I mean, when you have that many billions, you can do that and just say, I don't want to do this no more. Yep. And be out. Throw him up the deuces and like, I don't want to do this no more. All right, um, let's head on over and talk some more social media. TikTok is up next for um, labeling and warning people of questionable information, similar to um, uh, Twitter with their labels of misinformation. Facebook has something along the same lines. TikTok being extremely popular has now um, decided that they will start Um, displaying warnings on videos that um, have content that they cannot verify. Um, So it'll begin uh, to warn users um, when they go to reshare it. So it'll be on their feed, they can see it, but they won't get the label that they can't verify this information until they click the 
the share button and get ready to to share it to their friends and apparently the warning will say caution video flagged for unverified content and essentially that means they can't verify it but you know it could be right it could be wrong we don't know we're basically just covering our butts so y'all won't sue us for false information yeah. I'm curious as to who is looking at the millions and millions of TikTok videos on a daily basis and one has the time and the dexterity to do that all day long. Number two has the knowledge to be able to say, hey, something is not right about this video. And then three have the time to go research to figure out whether or not they can and can't verify or confirm this information before they have to do it all over again for a new video mm. so uh this is the problem with social media companies now having to step in and regulate uh, uh organize moderate their content user not even their content it'd be one thing if it was tiktok's content it is user content that's on their the platform whole, yeah that's on their platform but Without the users, there is no content. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Facebook, same thing with Twitter, same thing with Instagram. You know, now these companies have been pushing against it hard. Twitter's pushed against it hard. Facebook is pushed against it hard. Now they have no choice. They have now to. You see, now you have TikTok. Now they have to figure out, oh, crap. How do I moderate all of this content yeah. that we've been using and getting for free for users for years and that is going to cost money that's going to drive prices down values down so it'll be interesting to see where this goes because that in and of itself is an undertaking that they did not want to do at all you look at uber right mm -hmm. the reason why they don't want to make their employees their contractors employees because now you got insurance now you got lawsuits if somebody gets injured mm -hmm. now you've got all these things and if someone hits on. them workers comp too hey workers comp all the near they got to provide insurance mm -hmm. you got it and then you got labor unions the all this stuff that when uber just started all they said is we want to be the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Twitter, same thing with Facebook. Now, uh, TikTok, they're like, look, we just want to be the platform where users do their own thing. Now it's turning into something else. And I don't think they can survive. Well, I don't want to say I don't think they can survive, but it's going to be an undertaking to moderate user generated content that is uploaded millions of times a day mm -hmm. i don't see how they're going to do it and my thing is it doesn't really say in this article that we're reading from the verge if they're going to is this like from today going forward or if they're going to have to go back into their archives and flag that stuff as well um it doesn't really say in here but i'm interested in how they plan on on handling that especially if they have to go back into their archives and and archive that stuff to keep up with the same volume of content that they're being, you know, shared like today. So right. it's, I don't know. But for all you young folks, that's a good uh, business model. You need to start you a, uh, uh, a moderation, uh, moderating uh, consulting firm, firm mm -hmm. that <laughs> TikTok and Facebook and Twitter outsource their moderating to you and you just make sure you got some dedicated people that can sit there and look at TikToks and Facebooks and yeah. Twitters and tweets and reels and all this stuff all day long because it's coming. It's coming. They're going to have to do something about this. Yeah. They just, it just can't fly with all the stuff that happened. With the insurrection. You know, yeah. With the insurrection. You know, all the things that have happened you know, and people are organizing these things through social media and you know, you can only do that for so long before something happens. Right. All right, that is it for Second String. Let's head on into For the Culture. As it is Black History Month, we are introducing as we introducing back as we did last year, Teching While Black. And um, for, for Black History Month um, this year, I particularly uh, wanted to focus on the now 
people who are making black history. You know, we've heard of, you know, all of our pioneers in the past who have done amazing work and amazing things, but black history is still being made today. Anytime we have a first black person to do this or a first black person to do that, that's black history. So today I wanted to highlight uh, Sheena Allen, who is the founder and CEO of Capway. And Capway is a financial institution that provides financial access to um, individuals who are, uh, as their website says, unbanked, unbanked, underbanked, and poor, working poor millennials. Because I think we take it, you know, um, for granted that not everyone is able to go into your mainstream uh, financial institutions, you know, your Bank of America, your Wells Fargo, your, you know, whoever, um, SunTrust, but I think SunTrust is something else now, but your mainstream banking um, institutions, not everyone else um, has the ability to go into those institutions and get access to debit cards because, you know, we're going towards, you know, a cashless society. So, um, you know, I just wanted to to highlight the work that she's done um, with Capway. I think uh, they're based here in Atlanta, um, and it's believed that she is the youngest among only three Black women in the United States to own and operate a bank. Yeah, yeah shout out to her. And it's interesting because you mentioned um, they can't; they don't have access not only to the banking institutions, but in a lot of cases, they don't have access to the education of finances, Mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of these kids, you know, they been supporting family, you know, doing what they can. They get out in the world, don't understand how anything works, especially like you mentioned, cashless society. We're talking about mobile payments. We're talking about direct deposit. We're talking about, you know, mobile wallets, you know, Mm -hmm. we're talking about all these different things. And, you know, you just assume that most people know about it. No, that's not the case. So the fact that they're offering education, mm-hmm. which, of course, should be core education for anybody in sixth grade on up to 12th grade. Mm-hmm. But that's not the case. We know that's simply not the case. Right. So the fact that they are more than just a bank, you know, hats off to them for that. Yep. It's definitely that they um, use, you know, not only the financial exchange of it all but they you know get folks literate in money and finance and you know helping you know these individuals who are unbanked or underbanked or who are at a disadvantage when it comes to financial institution helping them you know along the path of financial health so uh, definitely um, dope and um, shout out to you all right uh, in sticking with um, finance, uh, I want to ask you, Terrence, you are our, for our show, the stock <laughs> trading guru. Right. Is Robin Hood robbing the hood? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see your play on words there. Um, so they are in a... I don't ever use this, but they're in a pickle because they we really don't know. For those who don't know, Robinhood is a mobile app that lets users, everyday users, invest in the stock market on very simple terms. You know, a lot of people get scared when you talk about the stock market because one, all the lingo, all the jargon, all the financial mumbo jumbo, they don't understand. They're intimidated by it. And then two, the myth that you have to have you have to have thousands of dollars in order to even start investing in the stock market. Well, uh, Robinhood, when they came out, they kind of uh, debunked both of those by making it easy, by making it simple, because it's on a mobile phone. I don't even think there's a Robinhood website that you can go to. Uh, if there is, it's super limited because the majority of the functionality is via a mobile app to where users can go in, they can connect their bank accounts to it and immediately start to invest, to 
Um, and even to sweeten the pot, you know, if you get started, you know, they give you free stocks that you can look at. So you, you it's like all you got to do is sign up and then boom, you're in the stock market investing game. Right. Mm-hmm. So they really then even the name, you know, they're making it simpler for people to invest, which is the name Robin Hood comes from. But uh, for the past week, uh, Robin Hood has been embroiled in this whole stock market uh, uh, GameStop shorting fiasco because a lot of the users who have been trying to disrupt the stock market system via investing all of this money in GameStop to drive the price up, mm-hmm. they were using Robinhood to do it. So the problem with, I mean, the, the underlying problem with that was that the users who use Robinhood may not be the actual customers that Robinhood caters to because Robinhood is free. There's no trading fees. There's no commissions. Robinhood does not collect a dime from its users. So then the question is, where do they make their money? Mm -hmm. So basically what they do is, and I'm going to try to keep it super short and super simple, is when I, as a user, place a trade on Robinhood's app, I'm not directly getting that stock immediately robin hood kind of gives me credit that i made this trade but then goes out and does all this other stuff with this other company that gives them money to actually make the trade but then that company gets the quote-unquote order form from robin hood that i made this trade they pay robin hood for all those orders and they use that data there's that word again mm-hmm. We're talking about data with facebook they use that data and they model it to kind of see where people are making trades in robin hood and then they use that data to actually make more money so it's like you're getting data robin hood is selling the data from its users to big companies who then go out and make all this money before the robin hood people can get a chance to make the money right so the mm-hmm. question is who is the customer? Is the user or is it the company that they pay all this money to? So how they wrap into all this is the company that um, Robin Hood was selling this data to was one of the companies that was shorting the GameStop, the GameStop stock. So when the GameStop stock ran went up, this company that was giving all this money to Robin Hood was losing money. So the rumor is these companies that Robin Hood sells his data to was like, look, y'all got to do something because we're losing all this money. So then Robin Hood puts out this uh, message that we are halting stock trading on these couple of apps. You can't you can't buy the stock. You can only sell it. So then that's when everybody went out. You know, everything. The jig is up. You know, Robin Hood is not really. And this is where your <laughs> play on words comes from. Robin Hood really isn't helping the everyday person. They're actually robbing from the poor and giving it to the rich. Mm-hmm. The rich being these companies that buy their data from Robin Hood. So that's where this whole thing is coming. So it'd be interesting to see what happens because now the government has stepped in mm-hmm. and they have mentioned that they're going to start hearings. And you better believe they're going to bring in Robin Hood. You know, the CEO is already trying to on this press release tour, trying to assure people that they halted trading because we were looking out for the investors because it's a volatile market. No. So so right. Right. So we're 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 looking out same way. Facebook this is like the Facebook game plan. Mm-hmm. It's like. How can we word this to make it look like we're looking out for our the little guy mm-hmm. when and now when, when all actuality, we just want your data so we can make more money. So shut up. Don't say nothing. Right. So uh, that's where all this kind of came from. So the question is, with Robin Hood, what's going to happen with these hearings? Is it going to come out that they halted the stock trading on their app because a parent company said we're losing money so we need you to stop this because if that is the case that is super duper illegal i don't know the actual words for Mm -hmm. the actual lingo um but that's super duper illegal and and or if that's not the case then 
you know, Robin Hood has kind of lost some of its uh, credibility with the credibility. little guy. It, it, exactly. You know, so you hear all these people, we're leaving Robin Hood, we're going someplace else. And if they're going someplace else, then guess what? Robin Hood does not have any. They no more data. more data. And if they don't have the data, they can't sell it to these companies. What's the point? Right. Yeah. So it's like they're stuck. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, it's also, you know, the fact that, you know, like you said, they halted the trading and the buying of these apps. And it's like, you know, the big banks and the big hedge funds, you know, they were the ones who were losing money and they were the ones right. who were freaking out. But I'm like, you already have millions and millions and billions and billions of dollars. And now you're trying to bully Robin Hood into acquiescing to you and putting a halt on the trading, the buying up and trading you know, doing short sale transactions of these stocks, you know, GameStop. Right. I think they stopped GameStop, AMC, AMC GM, Blockbuster, Blockbuster. Uh, uh, a couple of other ones. Yeah, right. But, but it's all good right. when these hedge funds do this short sale thing. But uh, when regular people get in on it and start making money, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't right. mean you were supposed to benefit right. from what we've been doing for centuries. Right. We didn't mean and that for you. And they did, and again, they do it. They did it. Well, let me say, let me first say, allegedly, that's what these companies told Robinhood to do. We don't know yet. We'll find Hearings out. So let's let just us say know. allegedly, <laughs> <laughs> right? But again, my issue with it personally is, why are you insulting the intelligence of people who decide they want to invest in the stock market? For years and years and years and years and years, ever since the invention of the stock market and the invention of the trading, they've always said there's a risk involved in trading. All every time anybody mentions anything about stock markets, the first thing it's people a negative say part is, of it. "Well, not just that." They say, "Well, look, I'm not a professional person. My opinions are my opinions." You can't take my information. You got to understand that there's risk involved, risk involved, risk involved, risk involved, right? Mm -hmm. So they burned it into our brains that if you invest in the stock market, there's risk involved, which is one, one of the reasons why a lot of people don't invest in the stock market. They're scared. Because, no, because they're scared. And that's for on purpose because. More for them. Only. Exactly. Right. So now they try to use that tactic. And now people are actually starting to say, hey. Um, with the with the advent of things like Robin Hood, now I, you've kind of demystified the stock market, right? On top of that, the way people are getting education or the way people are getting hip to what's all going on is through social media, mm -hmm. which is like the thing that kids do nowadays. They're doing it through memes. Mm -hmm. They're actually using memes to get involved and learn about the stock market. They're not getting it from traditional institutions which again like we mentioned before ain't nobody learning about the stock market in middle school ain't nobody learning about the stock market in high school because by design again conspiracy theory you know that they don't want you to learn about this stuff because only they only want the few people at the top to control the majority of the wealth so now these kids are starting to use social media like reddit which is where all this stuff came mm -hmm. from they're using memes they're using all these weird funky ways to invest smartly mm -hmm. in the stock market because they knew exactly who to attack mm -hmm. with this with you know shorting GameStop so to me for them and and then for them to do this right and then for some of these companies some of these analysts some of these pundits like on CNBC say well you know these kids they were on here doing these trades they weren't doing any research and you got to make sure somebody's going to be left holding the bag and the all rich these people things, right all these things to again intimidate and insult the intelligence of people who are now finally deciding to say hey i need my money to do something and i'm not going to go spend it i'm going to go invest it and like you said wait a minute Y'all ain't supposed to be doing that. So then again, even if it's wrong, it just looks like this is the play that they're doing. We don't want all of these people taking control of their money and taking control of our money 
So let's do all these other things to slow them down. And that's kind of like where everybody is with this whole thing. Right. Because previously, you know, the the veil and the denial of access and denial of education on these financial matters, that thing is ripped off and it's gone. These Mm -hmm. kids, I mean, not even just like the little kids, I mean, adults as well who Mm -hmm. weren't in that, the veil is lifted. So now Mm -hmm. they can see, they can Google, they can look at YouTube videos, they can read, everything is at your fingertips. So Mm -hmm. in previous times, when we didn't have this information superhighway, as they call it, it was easier to deny people access. Now that access has been removed, now they realize that, oh crap, we aren't the, what is it, the captains of industry anymore mm-hmm. that every man mm-hmm. is now mm-hmm. able to become a captain of industry as well and and like we mentioned it, you know at the top of the show like we mentioned in the pre-show you know uh they want to maintain status quo and i don't think they can do that anymore like, because these kids are investing kids meaning younger than us and we're not talking about teenagers we're talking about millennials 20 year olds 20 somethings who are getting smart and they're getting invested early you know they are starting to affect change Mm -hmm. you know because what one of the things that i want to come out of this is i want hedge fund managers and these high-end capital companies to be more open and disclose the short sales that they are doing and because if they don't these kids, you know, these redditors, you know, the the retail investors is what the technical term for them. They're going to start hunting and finding out. Okay, well, who can we, you know, take down next? And it's going to make these hedge fund managers, who in fact, which is some of the problem, right? And not to get too much deeper into it, these hedge fund managers are short selling companies, and they're using billions and billions of dollars of other people's money. We're talking about pensions funds. We're talking about teacher uh, retirement. They're taking all this money and they've been short selling is not illegal. It's just it's just funny money and it j- you just shouldn't be able to do it. So the fact that now you've got these retail investors who are like, we're, we're, we're watching you, mm-hmm. you know, so now they have these hedge fund managers have to be more responsible with people's money because I would hate for, and it sucks because this is something that they kind of mentioned in passing, but you know, these hedge fund managers who have lost all this money to these Redditors, they're losing teachers' pensions, they're using, they're losing 401k, they're losing money of people. They're using money that, that's that. not theirs. They're exactly. gambling with other people's money, and that's so, where it's going to come back to you when right. your teacher or your you know bus Police driver or whatever come yep. back and it's like why did my portfolio drop 15 percent yeah what because happened you're gambling because mm-hmm. you're gambling so now you have to be responsible now you have to disclose mm-hmm. and now you got to be more responsible so that's one of the the two things that i think as a positive will come out of this and then three more people will get involved in the stock market yeah. because it's like why not because they've been doing it for years they've been making millions of dollars why not get into it this is the redistribu- redistribution of wealth. This is just a one way we can do it by getting more people involved in the stock market. Let me take my thousandaire self and go in and, you know, get into mm. it as well. Because I know I think it was, oh goodness, I hope I don't mess up the age. It was a, a young um, child, a, a young black child, I think maybe 11, um, that got um, some shares in GameStop for mm-hmm. Kwanzaa gift. That made three thousand. Yeah, that made three thousand mm-hmm. dollars off of it. So it's one of those mm-hmm. things where you know, parent is aware, and you know, and it's and it's cascading to their children, and they're being able to benefit from it. And when you have your old money folks, they've been doing that, but mm-hmm. now let you know, you know, it's ushering in a new era where um, folks who aren't of that status, so to speak. They are getting in on it and they're starting to, you know, find ways to distribute wealth um, in mm-hmm. their own family. So, you know, it, and, don't, and don't insult their intelligence. They know there's risk involved. Yeah. They people who invested in GameStop know, let me watch this because soon as it starts to decline, I need to sell. There aren't don't I, I, I just it just rubbed me the wrong way 
that these analysts and, and pundits will go on and talk about like they don't know what's about to happen. The stock has got to come down. You don't soon, know what's about to happen know. either. Right. And it's like, don't insult their intelligence yeah. like that. These people are smart enough to know I need to get in. I need to make my money. There's risk involved. I could lose it. So let me be smart about it. Most of these people know that because you've been telling us, you've been scaring us mm -hmm. with the fact that there's been risk involved. Now we realize that and we play the game anyway. Now you're like, oh, now what do we do? So Yeah. And if anybody, if any of these folks, whatever money they invest, you better believe it's significant money to them. And you better believe they are going to watch it like a mm -hmm. hawk. So, you mm -hmm. know, they not don't don't play them. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't right. don't do it you you look yeah. stupid so yeah. <laughs> so yeah i think um that's it for for the culture did you have anything else um you wanted to talk about uh in for the nope. culture this week nope all right cool all right let's head on over to the hookup what do we have from you this week by uh brother tech in the yeah. hookup space yeah, so we talked about it at the top of the show about, you know, Apple celebrating Black History Month with their, you know, um, their Black Unity Activity Challenge. I talked about it last week to where they released a limited edition Apple Watch that proceeds will go to some of the institutions and funds and organizations that support, you know, Black equality. You know, they've got a watch and they've got a watch band, which I actually have the apple watch band uh that i bought from apple that you know has the pan-african flag colors red black and green so in addition to that you know they have uh black unity wallpapers that you can actually put on your mm -hmm. iphone and apple watch so i actually have one of the uh the wallpaper for the iphone for those <laughs> listening <laughs> you gotta Im imagine me showing my screen or go to his facebook uh, his instagram page and you'll see yeah, a pic yeah. there yeah i put a picture up on instagram of all of the apple black unity wallpapers and of course so i just wanted to for the hookup just wanted to show you or walk you through how you can actually get the wallpapers they're available for your iphone your ipad and your mac so basically what you do is go to apple.com and then under the apple watch black unity collection uh click the learn more button and then that'll take you to a new page that tells you more about the Apple Watch limited edition Black Unity Apple Watch. Uh, click find out more. Then once you click find out more, just scroll down to the bottom and you'll see the different uh, links that you can click to actually download the Black Unity wallpapers. And like I mentioned, you can download one for your Mac, for your iPad and for your iPhone. So if you want to visually represent and you want to visually support and you visually want to celebrate Black History Month to be your mobile gadgets, definitely go to Apple's website and download those Black Unity wallpapers. Cool. All right. That is it for this week. Definitely download, rate, and review us. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. You can also hit us up on social media. We're at Snobble Westcast um, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can also watch us and our previous episodes on YouTube. We're at Snob OS cast be sure to definitely like and subscribe to the channel you can also leave us any comments or feedback via our website snobblewestcast.com or send us over an email at snobblewestcast at gmail.com if you want to become a patreon you can support us for as little as five dollars a month um, with this five dollars you get access to our pre-show content access to our live show taping as well as to our exclusive chat community um, you can do this by going to patreon.com slash snobblewestcast um, and i don't think we have any new Patre uh, patrons this week but if you don't want to um, do the five dollar a month patron you can also send us over a little love offering via paypal you can uh, send that over at paypal.com me slash snob os to send us a little coin to let us know that you're out there that you're listening and you appreciate the content that we are bringing to you every week and i think that is it for this week we'll see you next week bye peace